Great is our God and greatly to be praised. He's an awesome, marvelous, magnificent God. The songwriter says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. This morning, he woke all of us up. He started us on our way once again. He allowed us to be here in our right minds. The blood still running warm in our veins. We have the activity of our limbs. And so we give his name glory. We give his name honor. We give his name praise this morning. Because he is God. And beside him, there is none other. Don't know what you've come to do today, but I've come to give him praise. Don't know what you've come to do today, but I come to give him glory. Don't know what you've come to do today, but I come to Shabbat the Lord today. Don't know what you've come to do today, but I come just to lift up his name in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible declares that one day every knee shall bow, one day every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. So we've come to praise his name today. Why don't we all stand on our feet if you can rest on your feet. If the Lord has blessed you to rest on your feet. Rest on your feet this morning and that we join in together and to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit into the house once again that we may have a little church because you can't have church unless the Holy Spirit comes. Let's pray. Our oh God and our Father, how great thou art. We thank you again this morning that you've blessed us. You allowed us to be in the house once again. And for this we say thank you. Thank you Lord. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory this morning because it all belongs to you. Yeah. We don't want to take any honor or praise or glory for ourselves. All that belongs to you. So come now, Holy Spirit, and breathe on these cold hearts of ours that we may do thy blessed will. We ask right now, Lord, that you would speak to somebody today that never heard your voice before. Lord, breathe on somebody today that's never felt your presence. Let the unction of the Holy Spirit take control of somebody today that they may know that you, God, and beside you, there is none other. Yes, yes. Most of all, we ask that you take charge of the service right now. Yes, yes. All that we do and all that we say yes. would bring glory and honor to your name. Yes. And that the kingdom is edified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Put your hands amen. together this morning. Let's just bless yes. the Lord right now as you take your seat. Amen. Take your seat. The choir is now going to lead us in an opening selection this morning. Everybody say, sing choir. Come on, you can do better than that. Say, sing choir. All right.
praise him. We praise him by clapping our hands. We praise him by lifting our voices. We praise him by doing our dance. That's the way we praise him. Uh, come on, somebody ought to praise the Lord this morning. The Bible says when David went out and he fought against the Philistines, he came back, the folks said Saul had killed his thousands, but David had killed his ten thousand. And everybody started dancing all over the place, all because of what the Lord has done. Amen, somebody. We ought to do our dance for the Lord today. Amen. Amen. And now, now look at, look, now I need you to do me a favor. Now just, if you got hands, lift them up like this right here. Lift them up, lift them up. Lift them up. Now, then maybe you ought to look at them because the Lord didn't give you just one. See, he gave you two. And that means that you can clap. That means you put them to, you put them together. Yeah, to give his name praise today. Oh, oh man, amen, amen. How would you feel today if everybody around you had two hands but all you had was one? And they clapping but you trying to figure out, how do I clap? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I think you ought to put them together to tell the Lord thank you. To tell the Lord thank you. Yes, two hands. A -a Amen. Amen. Kind of hard to clap with just one. Be doing all this and stuff like that. Can't live all you have with one, but he gave you two. Yeah, you can clap. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord gave you two feet to stand on. Amen. Kind of hard when all you had is one. You got to sit there and try to balance yourself, try to hold on to something, but he gave you two. Which meant that he knew what he was doing. When he made us. Amen. 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 This morning, our scripture reading this morning comes from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. If you find it, come on, stand on your feet. 1 Samuel 16, and the conclusion of the reading, Deacon Charles Johnson is going to come and lead us in prayer as we pray for those who are less fortunate than we are this morning. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 16, I'll begin at verse number 1. 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'm reading from the NIV this morning. <clears throat> the word of the Lord reads like this. It says, The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel said to Eliab, and Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And then Jesse called Abinadad and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by. But Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. 
we will, we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. And then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. Amen. You may take your seat. Amen. Tell somebody, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one. Amen. As Deacon Johnson comes this morning, we want to pray mightily for some families in our church that are grieving. Many of you may not know that Sister Bertley passed on yesterday. <clears throat> so we lift up her family this morning. We want to pray mightily for Brother Leo Williams, who's not doing well, along with his wife, Sister Carol, and we lift them up before the Lord this morning also. Pray, Deacon. Hallelujah, Jesus. We honor you by giving your name the highest praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, you heard the name that our pastor called. Only you, God, only you can comfort those families. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your will be done on their behalf in the name of Jesus. Lift them up. Lift up the bow down heads, God. Create in them a new heart and a new spirit that they may understand that it wasn't their will, but it was your will, God. And for that, God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Now, Father God, we lift up your sick and your shed in, God. We ask you, God, to dispatch your angels out amongst them, Lord. You know where they at, God. They're in the hospital. They're in the nursing homes. They're in their own home, God. We can have some sitting right here, God, in the amongst of us, God. But we pray your healing power, wherever they may be, do it for them, God. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we just pray today that you manifest yourself in this house, God, move from heart to heart and breast to breast. If someone have any odds against their brothers or sisters, God, let them do what the words say do, God. Go to them, God. Then, Father God, we just pray, Lord, that you just have your way today. Have your way. Touch these cold hearts of ours today, God. Deliver us. Break all chains that's holding us down. Meet every need that your people may have today, God. Meet them individually and then meet them collectively in the name of Jesus. Touch these homes, Lord, where they're children. We need the parents today to teach the children how they should be and how they should act and how they should live. Show them how to be respectful when they walk outside that door. Let them know, God, that you are the Alpha and the Omega. Let them know, God, that you are the Waymaker. Let them know, God, that you are the Supreme Ruler of this world and of this universe. Father God, we just pray for those that can't pray for themselves today, God. We pray, Lord, that whatever they stand in need of, God, you give it to them, God. Because we know we serve a God that can do, that can deliver. 
because he has all power in his hand. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We come to you today, God, just want to celebrate your son today. We want to remember him today. And Father God, we just ask you, Lord, to just let your will be done. Hallelujah. Pray for the manservant today, God. The one that's going to bring the word. Hallelujah. Touch him today, God. Anoint him afresh. Give him a word, Lord. Give him a word that will set our souls on fire. That we be a doer of the word. And not just a hearer. Let it penetrate us, God, that we will go out much better than we came in. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pray for those that are over in Ukraine, God. Pray your blessings upon them, God. Pray that you touch proof, move in him, give him a change of mind. Pray for the White House today, God. It's in a terrible state. But we know, God, that you can do it. Can't nobody do it. We know you can. So let your will be done there also today, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless mankind all over the world. Forgive mankind all over the world. <laughs> Start right here with us, God. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Because we all have sinned and came short of the glory. So look deep into us, God. Deep into our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you today, God. We thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. Because we all need it, God. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. And let your will be done. Amen. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And the saints of God say amen. 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 And amen. say that right there. That's why my heart is filled with praise today. Hearts filled with praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Johnson, for leading us to the throne of grace this morning. Brother Marcus.
Collins is going to come now, and he's going to welcome everybody. Where's Marcus? Where's he? Okay, he's right there. All right. Somebody dressed him up real clean today. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning, Marcus. Good morning. Good morning. Say it like you mean it. Good morning like you've been blessed this morning, that you woke up this morning, and you didn't do it on your own. All right. If we have any visitors, please stand. Amen. 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 Now, if y'all continue to stand, I'm going to leave you with this word today. And that is, whatever you do in your lifetime, put God first. Put him first in your life because whatever you do and the way this world is, have him first in your life. He is your defender, he is your guard, and he comes through and he comes through every day in a storm. So do you cannot go without him. And all, like I always say, wherever you go, take God with you. Amen. Now we're gonna have further remark from my own pastor. Amen. Please remain standing. I, <clears throat> some of you we know you've been here before, and we thank God for you. But if you don't mind, just slip your mask down. Just maybe tell us who you are this morning. Give you a chance to talk when they start. Young lady right here. Yes, ma'am. Town girl. All right, all right. Young lady right here. You, you said Dr. Peter Evans, right? Colossian. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right. Come on, young lady. God bless you. God bless you. Norfolk, Norfolk's right here. Chesapeake right here. Don't worry about it. Same place. Just come on. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. So grateful for each of you who stood this morning to say that you are a visitor here. We are grateful. We don't want you to feel like a visitor. We want you to feel like you're right at home here with yeah. us yeah. and because this is a church where God's love is yeah. and because God is love. And we're so grateful this morning that you've taken the time to come to be with us for whatever reason you decide to come today. Uh, the Lord has led you here, but we are so grateful for you this morning. And you are welcome to come to Mount Lebanon on any occasion. We would love to have you here with us. If you're seeking a church home, I pray that you would pray and ask the Lord if this is the place where you should be on this day. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And the Spirit of God rest with you each and every day. Amen. 
Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Y'all do me a favor. Mount Lebanon. Mount Lebanon. Oh, you all stand. All Mount Lebanon folks stand up real quick. Come on. You know if you belong to Mount Lebanon, right? Stand up real quick. Now turn around and look at the visitor and just say, thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This time, Sister uh, Digging this Sheila Hill Moore is going to come and she's going to give some announcements this morning and we'll follow that. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. The Dockers Ministry is in need of personal hygiene items to serve our brothers and sisters with, within the shelters. We are in need of toothpaste, soap, toothbrushes, socks, t-shirts, washcloths, men's and women's underwear. Any questions, please see a, service, a servant of the Dockers Ministry. MLBC will be recognizing our youth for our next Sunday, which is Sunday, July the 10th. We ask that you attend so our youth can be recognized for all the things they did in the school year this year. We are very proud of our youth and I hope to see you next Sunday. <laughs> A Pew Captain meeting will be held on Sunday, July the 10th, which is also next Sunday. After morning service, if you cannot attend, please contact me so we can get somebody in your family to attend. On Wednesday, July the 13th at 7 p.m., Mount Gilead Baptist Church, 1057 Ken Kennedy Street, Norfolk. Tidewater Baptist Association, Pastor Reverend Bowser is the guest. Our church music ministry, congregation, and ushers are asked to attend and serve. Save the dates. Car show returning Saturday, August the 6th, from 12 to 4. Food, desserts, and lots of cars to look at and see and we can reminisce on the past and reminisce on the future. Family and Friends Week will begin in September. September the 14th will be our family conference. Family and Friends Day, listen closely, will be Sunday. We will have our service and the cookout will follow the service. So that has changed from what we normally do. We usually do the cookout on Saturday. This year, we're gonna try something new. Everybody say, try something new. So we're going to have the service and the cookout on the same day. How, enjoy the rest of your weekend and be safe. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Dignity. Sheila, for the announcements this morning. I want to ask our church family, please be in prayer for the family of Sister Vertley. Uh, funeral arrangements are pending. We'll let you know as soon as we get word on that. Please still continue to pray mightily for Sister Carolyn and Brother Leo Williams. Um, Leo is home, um, but he needs our prayers, and Carolyn needs our prayers also. Let's do what we're supposed to do. Pray for one another. Amen. 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 Somebody. Never know when you're going to need somebody to pray for you. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I want to say thank you so kindly to the members of our church family and even those who are watching virtually. Uh, who blessed the pastor and first family on last month during our anniversary, our 17th anniversary here at church. We want to say thank you so kindly for whatever you did, whatever you gave, um, whatever you sold into us. We are just so grateful for you. Uh, and so I just want to be sure that we tell you that we love you and that you can't do a thing about, you, thing about it and we're going to keep on loving you. And you still can't do a thing about that either. So we want you to know we love you and we thank you so kindly for all that you've done for us and our tenure here. For those who are watching uh, by Facebook this morning, we're grateful for you being a part of our service this morning. And thank you if you weren't able to come to church that you gave also. And, and I know that some of you did. So I want to say publicly thank you so kindly uh, for your giving unto this family. And we pray God's blessings upon you. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 If you're born in the month of July, stand up. And July is your birthday month. All right. July is your birthday month. Amen. We want to take this opportunity this morning to say happy birthday to you. And we pray that this birthday would be special to you and that you would realize that 
It is the hand of the Lord that has been keeping you all the way through a pandemic, even up to this very moment right now, that you've been blessed. And we pray that this year for your birthday celebration, that do something special. Love on yourself a little bit. Sometimes, you know, you don't get all the love and attention that you need. But just go and love on yourself a little bit. Now, I, I, I know that, hold on, hold on, Jay, don't, don't, don't jump too far ahead of me now. Hold on, hold on. Now, I, I, I know that most men don't go to spas. They don't go and get their nails done. They don't have pedicures. Well, at least most of them I know don't do that. You might want to try something a little different. You might want to try a little massage. Mmm. Okay, okay. I'm talking about you paying for one now. Okay. <laughs> a little massage. A little pedicure. Make yourself feel special this year. Because guess what? You are special. Because you are God's child. And you're special to the Lord. And you're special to us. So happy birthday to you. And may you have many, many more wonderful birthdays. Jalen's birthday too? Birthday too? Yes. Oh, he was over there. That's why he was playing so fast and so loud over there. And his birthday too. All right. Happy birthday, Jalen. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's sing happy birthday. Let's sing. <laughs> One, two, three. Happy birthday. to celebrate. Anybody get married in the month of July? If you got married in the month of July, stand up. You got hitched in the month of July. Anybody? Nobody. Got married in July. It's too hot? That's what it was? Okay, all right, all right. We got to do something about that, y'all. Got to get somebody in July. Okay, all right, all right. Praise God, praise God. Amen, amen. Young ladies, see me immediately following morning worship. I got something for you. Choir is now going to come with their voices in song. And then we will come back with the word for the morning. Everybody say, sing choir.
who I am. So say it.
Just give him praise today. Come on. Praise is what I do. Come on. Give him a little praise today. Let's take a 30-second praise break. Come on. It's what I do. One more time. Say praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. Come on, bless the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Bless God for the choir today. God bless the choir today. Amen. Amen. Praise is what I do. Give him praise. Give him praise today. Give him praise today. He's worthy of our praise today. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Grandma, grandma would say it like this. Who wouldn't serve a God that's been good to you? And every time you look around, he's still blessing you. Huh? When your bank account get low, he puts money in your bank account. Fill it back up for you. Yeah. When stuff in your house start breaking down, God send somebody to fix it for you. <laughs> when you get lonely, God send somebody to come close to you. Speak a little life and encouragement in you. When you get sick in your body, he sends Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee, to you, to heal your body. Oh, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Well, if you don't want to serve me, at least you ought to say thank you. <laughs> Mama say, anytime somebody be nice to you, you ought to at least just say thank you. You ought to just tell the Lord thank you this morning. Amen, amen, amen. We don't apologize for being a little rowdy every now and then. I used to apologize that I'm sorry, but no, I, I can't apologize because God's been too good now. Amen. He's been too good. Every now and then you come to the church, you might not feel like it, but you'll just get your praise on anyway. I think you feel better if you're going to get your praise on. Huh? I, I think you feel better if you're just going to turn loose I I every now and then. Go ahead and kick your shoes off. Huh? Throw your hands up in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. <laughs> praise is what I do. It's what I do. It's what I do. Yeah. One more time, say it again for me. Praise is. 
Bow your heads and pray with me, and we'll get started this morning to the word. God, our Father, we thank you again for all the privilege, the opportunity you provided uh, to stand behind the sacred desk once again to declare the riches and the mysteries of your word. For eyes have not seen nor ears heard of what good things the Lord has in store for those who love him. Speak now through your word and through your servant this morning that your will may be done. Let now the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture that we read this morning coming from 1 Samuel chapter 16. I want to go back there, just the first verse I want to read. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Verse number one, verse number one, they got it up on the screen right there. First Samuel, first Samuel, chapter 16, on the screen. Let's read that together while they got it, if you can see that far. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Most of y'all, like me, y'all got four eyes, so you can, you can see pretty good. Let's read together. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horns with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen his son to be king. Okay, you may be seated. You may be seated. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. I want to talk just for a little while from this thought this morning. Some things you can't see. Some things you can't see. Here in America, America to me has become like an earthquake. There's always something shaking going on underneath of us. When you look back, you see in 2016, uh, the election of the president, then there's a shaking going on. Come forward to 2020, again, there was another shaking going on in March of 2020, a pandemic. Pandemic came upon us that began to shake us. And many of us thought it would only last for maybe a couple of weeks or a month. But look at where we are now, over two years, still we're not back to what we would call normal. There's like a shaking going on underneath of us. Look into 2021, January the 6th, at the Capitol in Washington, D.C., the insurrection, another shaking that was going on. Look at 2021. 22 to where we are now. The Supreme Court has now decided to reverse some previous court rulings. But that wasn't bad enough. Now they are looking at what else they can possibly go back and overturn. Another shaking going on. Well, the question that I probably want to ask this morning is, why so much shaking going on? Well, could the answer simply be that it's simply this, that the choices that we make in America seem to be opposite of the choices that God has for us. Could that be the reason for all the shaking that's going on in America is because of the choices that we make. That those choices are opposite to the choices that God would have to make for us. Well, with all the shaking going on, oftentimes shaking going on is because of bad choices that we've made. And bad choices oftentimes lead to 
mourning. Lead to mourning. M-O-A-N-I-N-G. Time of grief. Time of pain. Time of lament. And I want to tell you this morning, there's nothing wrong with grieving. Because there are times you ought to grieve to get it out of you. But the problem is with grieving is simply this. The problem is, is when grieving lasts too long. Why, why is that, Pastor? It, it, it's because mourning will stop your moving. And your moving is tied to your mourning. You see, as long as you got your head down and, and you're not looking up, you can't move to where God will want you to be. When you got your head bowed down and you're, you're, you're not looking up, as, as the scripture says, looking to the hills from which cometh your help, knowing all your help comes from the Lord. When you got your head down and you're looking down and you're mourning, you can't move. Your moving is tied to your mourning. Well, this morning, lest I hold you too long, this morning, this is where we find the prophet Samuel this morning. He's, his head is down. He's grieving because he can't get over what he couldn't see, what he didn't see that, that happened right before his very eyes. Samuel couldn't get over what he couldn't see. He couldn't get over what he didn't see that was happening right in front of his very eyes. You see, Samuel knew that he believed that Saul was the one that God had chosen to be king over Israel. But now the Bible says that the Lord has rejected Saul. Samuel can't get over the rejection of Saul, that, that God would now reject him for being king of Israel. And since Samuel won't move because of his mourning, God said, I'll move in spite of your misery. <laughs> come here, come here, come here, help you out this morning. God, God said, Samuel, if you can't move because of your mourning, I'll move in spite of your misery. Which simply says to me, the best thing that you can do when you can't seem to get over something is to ask the Lord to help you to get over it. Come here, somebody. The best thing you can do when there are some things in your life that you can't get over, the best thing you can do is to ask the Lord to help you to get over it. In the text this morning, God, God says, I, I, I got to help my servant Samuel because he's been in this position too long. He's been there with his head down too long. He's been grieving too long. He's been lamenting folks around Israel is looking at him. He's supposed to be the prophet. He's supposed to be the one to bring the word of God to the people of God. But yet he can't bring the word of God, Maurice, because he's got his head down mourning about what the Lord has done. Can I stop by to tell somebody this morning that you better pick your head up. You better get on about your business when the Lord rejects something and the Lord rejects somebody the best thing that you can do is tell God I got you Lord I'm on my way hey Samuel this morning can't lead God's people even though he's a prophet because he's mourning and what God really said this morning is boy you've been mourning too long is that a word for somebody today that God's saying to you, you've been mourning too long. Your head has been down too long. Child of God, you got to get over this because if you don't get over this next year in 2023, you will be right where you are in 2022. That's so what the Lord said to Samuel. How long will you grieve over Saul since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? God says, let's get over that, that in which I've already got a new plan, and my plan that I have is better than the old plan that I showed you. Well, the problem this morning is that the problem is sometimes we can't move because we are afraid to trust God of his choices. Sometimes, David, we can't move because we are afraid 
to trust God with the choices that God choose for us. Now, nobody said amen right there, but I'll just come on and keep on preaching anyway. Uh, because I want you to understand that this morning, may, may, may I suggest to you that, 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 that when God makes a choice, God knows what he's doing. Well, first of all, if you just take your Bible and you read your Bible, that the Bible suggests to us in Revelation 1 and 8, God says, I am Alpha and Omega. In other words, what God, what God says to us, he says, I, I'm Alpha, that everything commences with me at my word. But then he says, I, I am Omega, that, that everything concludes <laughs> with my word. Well, the question this morning is, is from the text is, why does God move this time this way? God is now moving. But the question is, why does God move this time this way? Because if you go back to, to 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, the, the, the people said to Samuel, make us a king to judge us like other nations. And, and what the Lord did for them is, Lord, heard him, and the Lord gave him somebody. But, but this time, God ain't asking no questions. How, how, how many of you know that, that when God gets ready to make a choice, he doesn't have to consult you? Yeah. How, how many of you know that, 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 that when the Lord gets ready to move in your life, he doesn't even have to come by to even tell you? You'll be moving and you don't even know what happened. He doesn't have to consult with you. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the beginning. So why, why, why does God move this time this way? Well, 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 first of all, God moves this time this way because this move involves the sovereignty of God. This move that God is making this time involves the sovereignty of God. This choice that God is making now, John, is all God. God ain't talking to nobody. He ain't consulting nobody. He's already made his choice. You see, Saul was God's appointment, but he was the people's choice. And I want to tell somebody that, that those whom God reject, you can't reelect. When, when God rejects somebody, you can't reelect them. Ah, uh, this morning, the Bible lets us know that he had already rejected Saul. Even though Samuel's head down and he, he, he's mourning this morning, God, God says you got to lift up your head. You, you see, when God rejects something, you can't change it. See, God had already rejected Saul for, for not destroying the Amalekites like he told him to do. And what God says now is, Samuel, you got to get over this thing. I I'm moving now, Samuel. We can't stay here. The people can't stay in this one place. We've got to move on. But the problem this morning oftentimes is, is that when God says move, we don't always like God's choice for our lives. That's what happened to America in 2016 when they elected President Barack Obama to be the President of the United States. It is a, many people in America didn't like that choice, but it was God's choice at God's time because many of us didn't believe that the boy was going to be elected president, but it was his time because he was on God's time, and God's time is already always right. You ought to hunt somebody and say, I know that's right. God's time is always right. You see, this, this is the problem. This is the problem also in, in many churches with pastors. <laughs> we, we have a hard time with God's plan. And oftentimes when God selects somebody, you, you, you think that that, that, uh, 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 that ain't right. Because you can't see it. And can I tell you something? You ain't got to see it. Because when God says it, that settled it by itself. Uh, can, I, can I give a personal testimony right here before I get to my next point? I'll be almost, almost done for you. It, it, is that back, back in 2001, my, my home church was looking for a pastor. I was not even a preacher during that time. I, I was there. I was on the search committee. As a matter of fact, I, I, I was the chairperson of the search committee. And we came time to elect a pastor, the very one that I thought was, should have been the pastor. The, the search committee said, uh-uh, we don't want that one. The church even said, uh-uh, we don't want that one. And they chose the one that they believed should be the pastor who was not the one that I thought would be the pastor. 
But I had to realize that when I looked at that thing, I had already prayed, Lord, let your will be done and not my will. And I had to realize, Gloria, that in the midst of the one that I didn't think should have been the pastor, he was sent there for me because four months later, I was standing saying, the Lord called me to preach. And he was the one who told me when he walked in, the Lord has already called you. Do not put down the very one that God chooses because God knows what God is doing. Uh, this morning here, here in the text, this morning God has now made his decision and this decision God has made now comes from the sovereignty of God. God says, I ain't asking nobody for their opinion. This choice is all mine. He's all mine. Well, the question is, is why does God move this time this way? Well, this time God moves is because this move is inspired by the sight of God. This move is inspired by the sight of God. God, God says in that first verse, he says, I am sending you to Jesse the, uh, of Bethlehem, and I have provided me a king among his sons. Look at that word provide there for me, please. That, that word provide simply means God says, I see, I, I, I behold. God says, I've already seen the one that is to be the king. I've already beheld the one who is to be the king. In other words, what God says is that I've already looked down the road and I know who I want to be the king this time. I gave y'all what you wanted last time, but this time, this choice is all mine. I have already peeped down the road and I know the one who is to be your king king. I have provided for me. That, that word I told you simply means to see or, or means behold. If you go back to Genesis 22 and 8, the Bible says that, that Abraham says, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That means that God has already seen. God sees what I cannot see. He has already provided. Well, here it is that when he comes now, he sends him to Jesse's house. And when he gets to Jesse's house, nobody can see. Come here, y'all. He gets to Jesse's house, nobody sees what God has already seen. Uh, nobody but God. Nobody but God. Because the Bible says when they got down there, the prophet Samuel himself looked and he said, surely, he looked at the first boy, uh, Eliab, he said, surely you are God's choice. But God said, uh-uh, he ain't him. It ain't him. Looked at the next boy and said, you, surely you are the Lord's anointed. And God says, uh-uh, that, that, that ain't him. Then he called the other boy, Shammah, out there. He said, surely you must be the one. And, and God said, no, it ain't him. And all of Jesse's boys, all seven of them lined up there. And, and God says, none of them are the ones that I have selected. And he says, you got to have another boy because God wouldn't have sent me down here if you didn't have if you didn't have another boy whom I know God has selected. He says, I got another boy. He's out in the field. He said, bring him here. And he brought David in and he took David and he anointed him and God said, that's the one. That's the one that I have chosen. The one that y'all don't think should be the king. That's the one that I have chosen. Well, I want to tell somebody whom God receives, you need to retrieve. <laughs> whom God receives, you need to retrieve this morning because oftentimes we can't see what the Lord sees. Uh, because every now and then, folks see a mess, but God sees a miracle. Every now and then, folks see junk, but God sees a jewel. Every now and then, Folks see nobody, but God sees a somebody. And you ought to praise God for seeing something in your life this morning. You ought to praise God this morning that God looked at you when nobody else looked like you. And everybody else said you will be a nothing because you are nobody and you are from nobody. But God says, I can take a nobody and make somebody out of him in front of everybody. And I don't have to ask anybody. 
Oh, I don't know about you, but maybe that's your testimony this morning. And you know, your testimony is that everybody around you didn't see anything in you, but God saw something in you. And you ought to just hold your hands up right now and say, yes, I was the one. They said I'll be a nobody, but look at me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on before I get too excited. That ain't my closing. I ain't done that yet. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait, wait. You see, God, God saw something in David. Everybody else couldn't see it. You see, God sees stuff that even your mom and your daddy can't see. Mm. Even your mom and your daddy can't see something. God sees stuff in your family that you can't see. You see, God said, you all see a kid, but God says, I see a king. They all they saw with David was a kid, but God says, I see a king. This morning, let me get ready to go to my closing, because I want to tell you why this morning that this move was different than any other move that God had made. Because first of all, this move involved the sovereignty of God. It was all God. This move is inspired by the sight of God because God has looked down the road, seen stuff that nobody else could see. But last thing I'm done today, why this move, why this move this time is different from any other move before because this choice included the Son of God. This choice that God made this time includes the Son of God. Well, this choice that God has made now has prophecy on it. You see, because Jesus came from the seed of David. He came from the lineage of David. And so, so I want to let you know today that God looked down the road. They couldn't see it. God saw it. I want to tell somebody this morning that God can talk about today while thinking about tomorrow. And you got to understand today that you might not always agree with God's choice, but, but let me remind you of how far into, into tomorrow you can see versus how far into tomorrow God can see. God says in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, for neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord, for as high as the heavens are above the earth are my ways than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God, God simply says, you can't compare with me and how I think and even about how I even see something. I want to say to you today as I get ready to go that, God, that whom God raised, you ought to praise. That's a good shout point. Whom God raised, you ought to praise. Well, this morning from they, from Jesse's house, God has provided himself a king among all of Jesse's sons, but just from this little boy named David. And one thing you can be sure of in life, that God's choice is always the best choice. You see, God had chosen David out of all of Jesse's boys. It was simply God's choice. Well, what's the problem with God's choice? Pam? Well, what, what's the problem with God's choice? Because God's always making some choices. But, but what is really the problem sometimes with God's choice? Well, let me, let me tell you what the problem is with God's choice for us. Well, oftentimes the problem with God's choice for us is the one that God says it is not tall enough. Problem that God's choice every now and then, the one that God's picked. It, it, it doesn't have the right credentials. Right. Oftentimes, the one that God chooses is the one that's got the wrong complexion. Oftentimes, the one that God chooses is from the wrong neighborhood. Oftentimes, the one that God chooses is from the wrong family, got the wrong family name. Oftentimes, the one that God chooses doesn't have enough education. Oftentimes the one that God chooses doesn't have enough experience. But I'm the one that standing here this morning to try to tell you, like I told you just a few moments ago, 
that God is the only one that can take a nobody and make a somebody out of them in front of everybody and don't have to ask anybody. Is there anybody here this morning just want to let somebody know that I can't see what God sees, but I got enough sense this morning that I can trust what God's choice because God's choice is always the right choice. Is there anybody here this morning who want to tell somebody a long time ago, I didn't trust God, but I look at my life right now and I realize that God made the right choice when I couldn't see the choice that God made. Well, how you know it's the right choice, Pastor? I know it's the right choice because a long time ago, over 2,000 years ago, when the world didn't know which way it was going to go, when there was an earthquake in the world, it was shaken up and down. But God called Jesus, called him to be on a cross one Friday afternoon. And they hung him on the cross that Friday afternoon. And they did they buried him on a borrowed tomb that Friday afternoon. And he stayed there all Friday night and all Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, God got him up. Why? Because he was God's choice. And God's choice right now is on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you and for me. You couldn't see it. You couldn't see it. But God saw it because God looked down the road, way down the road, and knew that you need a redeemer. You needed somebody to redeem you. You needed somebody to pay the price for you. You couldn't see it, but God saw it. And because God saw it, look at you now. You want to stand up and tell somebody, I am who I am because God saw what I needed. He knew I needed a savior. He knew I needed a redeemer. He knew I needed one who could pay the price because I couldn't pay the price, but Jesus paid the price. And all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he's washed it whiter than snow. God saw what you needed. It was not your choice. But he saw what you needed. You thought you needed a beautiful wife. She couldn't save you. Thought you needed a new house. That can't keep you. Thought you needed a good job that paid you a lot of money. That couldn't do it. You would have went to hell with a pocket full of money. But look at God. He knew what you needed, saw exactly what you needed. Many of us have made the wrong choices. <laughs> you know why? Because we were mourning with our heads down instead of looking up to see what God was doing. This morning while you're here, and I'm done for the day, while you're here this morning, come on, stand on your feet. Because there may be somebody in the house this morning just need to give their life to Jesus. It's a choice that you got to make. Listen, you got a choice. And isn't it good that God gives us choices? Now, I don't know about you, but I, I wish God made all my choices for me. Didn't let me make none of them. God have made too many bad choices. And don't look at me funny because you can do like this. You have too. Made some bad choices. But God gives us free will choice. And this morning the choice is, is that you're not saved. You can choose Jesus. He's already paid the price for you. All you got to do is come and, and confess and say, Pastor, I'm a sinner and I desire to be saved. You confess the Lord Jesus. He'll save you right where you are. Is there one this morning who would come and say, Pastor, that's me. I'm making the choice this morning. And the choice is to follow Jesus. Is there anybody here today who want to give your life to him? You may be here. You don't have a church home. You're looking for a church home. You can come this morning, joined by Christian experience or by letter this morning if you want to come.
come that we may unite together as pastor and people to grow into the kingdom of God. Is there one who would come this morning? The doors are open. The doors are open this morning. Every head bowed, every head bowed. Somebody's trying to make a choice. God has already spoken to you. You're just not sure it was God's choice, what God's choice is. You're not sure what God's choice is. But when you're not sure what God's choice is, what do, what do I do? What I do is I pray and I ask God, help me to accept your choice when I can't see it. And can I tell you what he'll do? He'll help you to make that choice. He'll help you to make that choice this morning. Praise God. He'll help you to make that choice this morning when you can't see it. All of us have eyes to see. But oftentimes, with our eyes wide open, it's just like having our eyes shut. We can't see. But God wants to open your eyes this morning that you can see. See what he's doing and what he's going to do down the road. Keep praying. The young lady is here this morning. Keep praying. I don't know what our request, what our request is, but pray for her right now. She stepped out. She stepped out. She's here. Whatever her request is, we want God to answer it this morning. The same as you, whatever your request is this morning. Want God to answer your request this morning. Head down, mourning, grieving. And sometimes the devil wants you to stay right there. But God says, lift your head up. This day is July the 3rd. Nine years ago on this day, on this morning, my mother went home to be with the Lord. Sometimes that grief wants to rise up. But God says, lift up your head. You got to keep moving. Mama's already in a better place. You got to move now to do what I've called you to do. Do what I've called you to do. Praise God. Lebanon. Come on, bless the Lord this morning for Melanie Jones, who's come to join Mount Lebanon this morning. Amen, amen. You may take your seat. You may take your seats. Amen, amen. Melanie Jones come to join Mount Lebanon today. Amen. She's come to be in the same ship that we're in, called Fellowship. And I told her that when you're in the, we, 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 we're all in the same ship, that means that you got to roll some and I got to roll some too. We all rode because we're all trying to get to the safe. We're all trying to get to the other side safely together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Trustees, come on. Let's make the tables ready before we go into communion this morning. Come on, trustees. Amen. Amen. Sometimes preachers don't feel like preaching, but we got to preach anyway. Amen. 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 Let the Lord use. Let the Lord use. That's all you do. Uh, Write stuff down and <laughs> sometimes.
sometimes it don't come out right, and sometimes you can't read it after you write it down. The Lord will block it. <laughs> Keep you moving. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our ushers today, all dressed in white and gold. <laughs> Amen. For the ushers this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Our ushers, are y'all going to march this morning, man? Y'all coming to the table? All right. All right. Come on, man. Y'all put your hands together. Come on. Give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Everybody on my left side, if you would stand on my left. The ushers will direct you from the table, from the rear. For he is good. He's worthy. For he is worthy. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. He is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Thanks. Everybody on my right, if you stand. Father, we thank you now for the gifts that have been given on this day. We ask now that you bless the gift as well as the giver on this day. And we pray for that one who may not have anything to give on this day, that God, that you would bless them, that they will be able to come back in due season, come and to sow into your kingdom. We bless your name and we thank you. All things come of thee and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. You may be seated. now move into this period called Holy Communion. A time when Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room. And there he set a new standard for them. He told them to do this and he says as often as you do it do it in remembrance of me. As you remember my death and my suffering until I shall come again. The Apostle Paul gives us words that we ought to live by. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23, he says, for I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. I'm going to ask Deacon Shirley Strowman if she would come. She would pray over the elements this morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to take part in this supper. Forgive us, Lord, if we've done anything, said anything that's out of your will. Please bless these sacraments that we're going to take for our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Is there anyone been omitted? Did everybody have your cup this morning? Is there anybody omitted? It was on that Thursday evening when Jesus met in the upper room with his disciples. It was there that they ate the Passover meal. At the conclusion of eating the Passover meal, the Bible says that Jesus took bread. He took bread, he broke it, and he gave thanks for it. He said, this is my body which was broken for you. Take ye and eat. In the same manner he took the cup cup of common wine and he said this cup is my blood of the new covenant he gave thanks he said take ye and drink for as often as ye eat as often as ye drink ye show forth my death until I come the word of God says that they sang a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives but we have no Mount of Olives that we go out to but we have our homes and our communities that we go to that we can spread the love of Jesus everywhere that we go. So, child of God, take the love of Jesus today everywhere that you go. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. May we all stand. Every head bow. Oh God, our Father, we thank you now for this time that you've given us that we can share we can fellowship one with the other. Thank you now that you've blessed us to be together and that we could partake of your body and of your blood in remembrance of you. Now, God, as we've done what you've asked us to do, we ask that you would be our protector, our provider, and that you would be our sustainer and keeper. That everywhere that we go, that we can spread the love of Jesus to let men and women know that the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Now we bless your name in Jesus' name. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, who's able to present you faultless before his throne with exceedingly glad joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be dominion, power, majesty, now henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God said amen, 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 amen. and amen. Go in peace. Go in peace.